Hey, you want to do some math with me? Hi, I am Rachel from 7 and All, and today I'm going to be doing a do a lesson with me of first grade math with confidence for this video. First grade math with confidence. And the approach I'm going to take to this video is I am going to talk you through the way I do a lesson, but I'll intersperse it with thrilling action shots of actually doing the lesson <laughs> um, so that you'll get the information and you'll also get some visuals on how this really works. Um, so to start off with, how I start a lesson actually begins before the lesson itself begins. It begins with setting up, <laughs> setting up everything I need on the table where we do schoolwork and I do this before I call my son to the table, before I call him to begin doing schoolwork. I actually set up all of the stuff we need for the other lessons like reading and cursive, any of his school books, I set it all up at the same time. But I do think that this is very important with Math with Confidence because th these lessons are not overly complicated but they also are a little, they require a little bit more supplies than just the teacher book and the student book, typically speaking. So. I'll spread out everything I need, the teacher book, I'll get out the student book, the pencil, any flashcards we're using or counters or play money, whatever we're using for that day, I will set it up before I ever call my son to the table. To me, this is a key part of being prepared and a key part of successful lessons, especially with small children, because you probably know that it is all too easy to totally lose your student when you have to go off and find a supply that you didn't realize you needed for whatever lesson you're teaching. So that is stage one of the lessons. Then I just work through the lesson as written in the teacher book and I'll probably make adjustments as I go based on what I see and what I need. But every lesson begins with a warm up section. And in first grade, it's mostly focusing on counting, memory work, and review of any concepts. So on this particular day, we were prompted to toss a ball back and forth while counting to 60, which is great practice. You know, you're counting how many tosses you're doing. You have to stay focused on what number comes after each number while doing something else of throwing. It definitely got us a little challenge, a little fun, a little bit of kinesthetic learning right there. Um, then the memory work, and this is about nine weeks into the program. The memory work is just real quick going over, hey, how many sides does a triangle have? How many sides does a square have? How many sides does a rectangle have? In the last part of the warm-up, we were reviewing tally marks. So I was going through the tally mark card, showing him to them and telling him to tell me how many tally marks there were as fast as he could. So a very easy, simple review. Depending on your child, you may these reviews may be more or less important. Um, I do feel like my child very much benefits from the review and from the practice, so we do consistently do these every day. After the warm-up session, then there are typically two teaching and practice activities in the lesson. So in this particular lesson, it's a lesson about using missing add-ins to subtract. It's basically the concept that if your whole is 10, you know the pairs that make 10 by this point. Three plus seven make 10. Well, if you know that three plus seven makes 10, that means you also know that 10 minus seven equals three. It's kind of this mind blowing fact. I mean, to us as adults, it probably seems like, well, obvious. But if you're five years old, it might be a little bit mind blowing to realize, hey, I can use what I know about adding to 10 to also subtract from 10. We're practicing with this, visualizing it, um, using cards and counters, and they, they give you a exact script inside the teacher's guide and in the script, it's all talking about cookies and sharing cookies, and if you give this many cookies away to someone else, how many cookies do you have left? Um, so she uses cookies a lot. Um, you can, of course, replace cookies. I sometimes might replace them with something that's very interesting to my son at the moment, maybe Hot Wheels cars or <laughs> whatever his passion of the day might be, you can definitely replace it. She tends to co fairly consistently use cookies <laughs> and cookies are a good one. There's a lot of adding and subtracting that can be done with cookies. 
So we go through that activity, do some modeling, and that goes through a number of different uh, equations. And I also wrote down those equations. And I did the writing for those equations on a piece of paper for the pairs of equations. I wrote them out in marker before we uh, started the lesson so that that was also ready. That was part of the prep. Then the second activity for this lesson was to play a card game to do basically matching the pairs that make 10, but now you're thinking of it in terms of subtracting. So if you pull a seven, how many is gonna be left from 10? Okay, so now you need a three card to go with this seven card. So that uses a deck of cards. And then that's your action, <laughs> that's your interactive portion of the lesson. Then your child does the student workbook page, which is two sides of a page for the first grade level. The front side is usually the newer material covered in the lesson. And then the back side of the page is more review material. And that is how I do a lesson of first grade math with confidence um, with my son at this stage. It takes a little bit longer to actually do in real life than this video probably did <laughs> to talk through it and to show glimpses of it as it goes on, but it is not a super long and involved lesson. The activities are very interactive, but they can be very short. Sometimes my son does ask to play one of the card games or play one of the activities and math games, you know, three or four times, that does make it take longer if we repeat and repeat. But then on the other hand, if we're repeating the same activity several times, we're also getting a lot more mastery and practice out of it. So <laughs> that sounds like a win to me. All right, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was helpful to see and hear what a realistic day in the life of using math with confidence looks like. I will be seeing you next time. Bye.